Hi, I'm Joshua Farley. And I'm Marcus Soto. And this is Inside Our Industry. Today we're going to talk about backfeeding solar into the grid and how we do it, what are the codes, what are the, what are the common things that we look at or we look for. All of those things involved in um, taking solar from your house and put it, introducing it into the grid. First off, I want to say everything we do in electric is guided by the National Electric Code. So the National Electric Code pretty much writes the rules for everything that we have to abide by in the field. So when we talk about the different articles for solar, we have two that we look at uh, mostly is Article 690, which pretty much runs everything on the photovoltaic side. And then there's Article 705, that will, talks about interconnecting power sources. What are interconnected sources? What does that mean? So there's a lot of different interconnected sources of power. It's just anything that could pop, potentially be pushing power into your system. So we got generator, we got solar, batteries, any kind of wind or water power. Anything that, that can produce power as a source and push it into a system. Got it. So the grid, yeah. like everything all, all together. Yeah. So let's talk about um, solar, right? So here we have a, a standard 200 amp. This one's a solar ready. Yep. Um, what does that mean, solar ready? What is, why is it solar ready? I think it's bull crap. I think it's bullshit, right, that this is solar ready. Yep. When every electrical panel is solar ready. Yeah. Yeah. Every electrical panel is solar ready. When I think of solar ready, I think that they should have a breaker already installed. Yep. What is this one? Some of some manufacturers do make a, a specific places for solar right. ready breakers to go in. Right. Um, this one specific is a square D panel, and they claim that it's solar ready because they sell a secondary kit, pretty much, that you can line side tap. Gotcha. Line this or supply side. Supply side tap. This Got one. it. Okay. So this particular, this is like the most common electrical panel we, we install, right? It's a 200 amp all-in-one um, residential all-in-one home line, right? So what that means is you have your utility comes in from this area. This area, once we install it, we're not allowed to, really not allowed to get in there afterwards. The SRP or APS will put a lock on this. Um, they'll, uh, they'll just put a little tab on there to just tell people to stay out of their yeah. section. Like this is their section, this meter section here. Um, what happens is utility comes up, hits the meter, then the meter pulls power through the CTs, which is that's how they're calculating your bills and they're, they're seeing how much power you're using. And then from there it comes up through this bus bar into the main lug here of your, of your panel. So your panel here, this one's rated at 200. It's got a 200 amp bus. This section in here is what we call busing. Um, that's going to determine how much solar we can put into this panel. So we know we have 200 amp. We know by the nomenclature on the panel, it's a 200 amp bus. So NEC article 750.12 tells us that we can't exceed 120% of the bus rating. Right. So what that means is this bus as is, at 200 amp breaker here and a 200 amp rating, that means that 120% is 40 amps. Yeah. Or so 240. 240. Um, as long as the dual power sources are attached at opposite ends of the bus. Not there. So we have 240 amps capable for, from multiple sources. Yep. At 120% rule given the given the 70512 in in the National Electric Code, and we put these far away. Why? It's part of the code that they need to be as far away from each other as possible. Um, and it's just due to heat. So we are allowed to use the 120% the opacity of the bus bar per this NEC code 70512 only if they're installed at opposite ends. Exactly. Yep. Right. So then, and it states that it says, so where a primary power source and another power source are located at opposite ends of the bus bar that contain loads so like those that's specific hey this has to be way up up at the top and then not the opposite end that's the rule in using that 120 percent and they do that because if you put both of them up here your potential of overload mm -hmm. in this area increases versus having it dissipate throughout as it's pulling from because what happens is you have this filled with branch circuits yep. and you're pulling into your spa your pool, your microwave, your outlets, wherever it's Everything, coming, like yep. you're, and, and it's during the day, 
that's going to be di distributed as it goes back. Right. So it doesn't go to the grid. You're using it. Mm -hmm. So if, but if we had it here and everything was pulling down here, it would be pulling from that same location. And then you have potential to overload the bus at that location. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why NEC permits this as a farther, farther away to keep anything from happening. So on this panel, Marcus, let's talk about derating. So we get, we get a question all the time, like, why do you have to change the main, why are you changing my panel? Yeah. Or what are the, like, what are the options if 40 amps isn't enough? So what, let's start with what is derating. Right. Derating is ultimately us taking this main breaker that you currently have <clears throat> and making it smaller because all this does is protect, it protects this bus bar mm -hmm. from being overloaded. So if we make this main breaker smaller, it's protecting this bus bar at a lower rating from the utility pretty much which makes it so that our back feed breaker can be bigger. So yeah, it's limiting how much can go in there. Yeah. <clears throat> so typically what we do is we have to run calculations to make sure that derating is acceptable. Right. And once we've run those calculations, typically this gets changed over to a 175 amp main breaker. So That's we, your most typical D rate. D rate, yeah. We've so seen it at 150. You can do 150 amp D rates every 100? once in a while. Not typically. But the, I mean, it's the, possible. Yeah, it's possible. You can derate it down to 100, but typically the math as far as overloading doesn't. And you do that because of the load calculations of the home. Yes. And that's yeah. because when the solar's not producing, the load, the, the, yeah. the home it's, at night, the load. It's got to be able to run your They house still have night. that load, yeah, right? Okay. Exactly. Okay, so derating, changing the main breaker. So we just dropped. Ideally, we use a 175 amp breaker. You take that whole breaker out yep. and you replace it with this 175 amp version of the same thing. Got it. What that does is it makes it so only 175 amps can come from the utility, <clears throat> which now we run our calculations again. 240 is the max that we can push into this bus. Because of the rating of the 200 amp bus. Yep, yep, because the rating of the 200 amp bus. Now this back feed breaker, the calculation says 65 amps. It could be 65 So amps. the 25 amps you took from here can essentially be added to here. Exactly. Staying within that 120% rule. Exactly. So 65 amps, I mean, that's a pretty big solar system. That's a pretty big solar system and they don't make 65 amp bricks. Right. <laughs> right. So right. it's a 60 amp. So we'll do a 60 amp, right, because they come in the standard increments, 60, 70, yep. um, <clears throat> and so on. Um, <clears throat> okay. What if, what if they needed a bigger? What if they wanted more solar than that? For this panel specific, Square D makes a kit, a, a line side or supply side tap kit, which, which we also yep. have, which makes it so that we can feed the solar system in before this breaker, before the busing, right. which makes it so that we can add a larger solar system into Got that. It. Okay, so we can do, and that's just taking these these lugs here and putting them on the bus up here, right? Yep, and there's, there's additional things that we have to do sure. as far as protection. When we do that, we have to put a, a disconnect on that side of it to make with fuses, a fuse disconnect right. to protect everything as far as that system goes. Got it. And then, so if we let's say we have this derated to two to one seventy five, mm -hmm. and what if I used a forty and a twenty five? What if I had two different systems? Could I do that? So the utility <clears throat> has stuff that you can they have do regular, that. Okay. But if one of these was solar and one of them was battery an AC coupled battery system, yep. you can do that as long as you put them as far away from the busing. So one, the solar would go here, the battery would go here. Right. So, um, you know, we've seen random scenarios where w the customers had one existing system and then they want to add an, they want to add to it. So um, sometimes those systems can't be added to. So we just create a new system right. separate of that system. And then we back feed with another breaker, even though some and then there's two meters. Yeah. The utility wants a meter on each one. Now they're allowing us to combine them outside and, and have one meter coming back into one breaker. But there are some variables that we can, that we've seen over time, right? Yeah. The best way to do it is just one, one feed, mm -hmm. you know, because the utility's got their, I mean, we have to go NEC 
and yep. then and then the cities got some some differences that they have and then the utilities got their own set of rules that we have to play by right yeah so okay that being account that all that being said what if it still wasn't enough what we would do if if we needed a, even a bigger system than this kit could handle yep. then we would install a 400 amp oh we would just panel. take this up we would yep. just re replace this with something bigger. Yeah, we would install a 400 amp electrical <clears throat> panel, which comes with two 200 amp. <clears throat> it has a primary and a secondary 200 amp. Right. We would use the primary 200 amp to feed the house, like it is now. Your your home <laughs> is, is going to get the 200 amps that it originally had. The secondary 200 amp would be where the back feed from the solar Got it. goes. Got it. There are also panels that have different bus ratings. So, like, we've seen a lot of 200 amp panel 200 amp all-in-ones that have 225 amp rated bus yes which this one doesn't i'm surprised because the solar ready like mm -hmm. when i i remember when that first happened when i first heard solar ready panel it was because the busing was rated for 225 even though i had a 200 amp main so that means we could do our 120 percent off of the busing at 225 yeah, which the, the calculation on that, if we don't do a D-rate, is a 70-amp back feed. Right, but then we could D-rate to a 175 and get 95 amps worth of back feed. Like, so then, you know, so depending on what panel you have at home, um, we'll be able to know, we'll look at it, we'll be able to know and do the calculations per NEC and be able to tell you the system size of solar that you want, is it big enough, do right. you have to change it? But we were just talking to, you know, with Michael, with one of our inside guys, who, what was he saying? He was he was asking how how to explain like the options to the customer um, as far as whether or not to do a breaker D rate or to do a main panel upgrade. <clears throat> I it's not really an option. It's, right. It's based on a few different things. How how old your existing panel is, what kind of shape your existing panel is. We might want to do a, a panel upgrade just because your existing panel is. 40 years old with from a manufacturer that no longer exists or they right. don't make parts for it anything, something like that um, we also look at how big the back feed from your solar system is going to be and, and how full it is and how full it is right. yeah to kind of determine whether or not the the d rate is going to be enough for you or if that's what's best for the customer right if that's not then we'll do a panel upgrade with a solar so the customer had he, he asked for options but there's no option it's not an option it's really. just it's what just, what needs to be done obviously we can always if if a breaker d rate is enough yep. and the customer wants a a panel upgrade a new electrical panel yep. obviously we can do that for the customer sure that's something that the customer wants that's n not necessarily needed for us to. So if you have any questions, click below, let us know what they are so we can answer them. Um, we've had scenarios where a customer has been talked into changing their panel when they didn't need to. And that could be, you know, that's thousands of dollars that you didn't need to spend just because other contractors don't understand that that rule, the NEC, they don't, don't, they don't have the experience. I had a customer call me, he was a friend of mine, he was a friend of mine before I found out he bought solar from another company. He's like, I didn't know you guys did that. I'm like, how do you not know? It's in my name, right? Redline Electric. So long right, story right. short, those guys told him that he needed to replace his panel. Um, a quick look at the engineering and pictures of his panel. I told him all he had to do was change his main breaker out and, and, and it saved him, I think, 4,500 bucks. Yeah. Um, so he obviously feels bad that he got hosed and he didn't come to us. But, yeah. you know, those are the things that you got to look out for. So we know what we're looking for. We know how to protect you. We're not going to sell you a new panel if you don't need one. I, 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 we just don't. That's just not how, that's not who we are. There's no reason for it. <clears throat> um, so I hope this answers any questions as far as derating uh, or backfeeding the solar into, into your residential electrical panel. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know if you need anything.